Hey, what's going on everybody? Let's go over real quick the elbow and the wrist and the hand. So obviously if you're following along with me on this PowerPoint, there are quite a lot of slides. And I'll be completely honest with you, this is not my PowerPoint. Uh, this is my buddy's, but I kind of finagled it into mine real quick because um, what I want you to know guys is just the practical points. Okay, so what I'm going to teach you today is most of what you're going to see because this is just like an introduction class. Obviously, if we were going over upper extremity, it would take a full semester and we'd go into more detail and things like that. But I just want to give you basically an impression of what you're going to see. I have also attached another video of the special test, so I'm going to skip those in this lecture because I talk more about those of what's positive and how you would look at it as far as it relates to the ligaments of the elbow, okay? So just real quick, the uh, anatomy of the forearm, literally guys, the elbow, the joint, uh, almost relates to the knee. Besides the olecranon process, everything is almost the same as far as the uh, radius and ulna kind of relating to the uh, tibia and fibula and the humerus relating to the femur, okay? Uh, this is, because of its size, it is the most unstable joint in the body correlating to the smaller ligaments surrounding. So I want you to understand that the UCL, which is on the medial part of your elbow, kind of correlates to the MCL of the knee. So when we talk about valgus and varus stresses of the knee, also it correlates to the elbow, okay? The RCL is on the other side. Those are the two ligaments that I want you to understand practically of what of the elbow. So we'd have a, a RCL uh, prevents from varus force, UCL prevents from valgus force, okay? Um, obviously, if you're looking at everything um, uh, in any evaluation, the first thing I've always told you to rule out is a fracture. Now, a compound fracture can happen here, too, because there are two or more bones involved, which is the radius and ulna, so you need to understand that, which I'll get to in just a second. And then what I want, what I want to uh, look at real quick is on slide 11, olecranon bursitis. This is a very... A common injury and it looks a whole lot worse than it actually is okay so what happens is you will get a lot of times for me when I when I saw this injury it was either in wrestlers or boys and girls basketball players they'd come down like on an elbow obviously it can happen within any sport but those are the sports that I saw the most okay so what happens is you've got the bursa sacs surrounding the elbow here um, obviously we do not have a lot of muscles creating a pad just like with the knee to prevent or um, protect that joint so when you come down right on the bone it almost feels like you hear that funny bone well that's what happens one of the bursa sacs surrounding your joint either gets ruptured or it gets aggravated and then it will blow up and swell really bad obviously you can see that on side slide 12 it looks completely abnormal sometimes that makes people sick but that's what it looks like it looks scary a lot of athletes or a lot of patients will come in and be like oh my gosh what happened and things like that but it's usually just localized swelling as long as there's not a fracture or there's uh, no uh, um, neurological symptoms going down their extremity and things like that this we're just going to treat it symptomatically all right so it's like a lot of rest a lot of ice uh, but we have to protect it once one of these bursa sacs are basically ruptured or they're aggravated it literally can take somebody just flicking you in the elbow just like that to rupture it again and, and, and like a swelling like this on slide 12 can literally take three days to get better and it can take five minutes to look like it again okay a, a story real quick I had a girls basketball player she landed uh, on her elbow at practice had a lecker bursitis and her she had a game on Friday I had it all the way swelling was gone she was a great patient came in every day worked on it we had the swelling out of there one of her teammates just joking around literally flicked her elbow and right before the game 10 minutes before the game it blew up again she couldn't play so that's how sensitive it is, and that's why you want to protect it. And, and also tell the patient, hey, protect yourself from other people being stupid. So um, real quick, I'm, going, I'm passing all the special tests, guys, because it's in my other video, all right? Lateral condylitis, medial condylitis. Real quick, so lateral condylitis, uh, just to hit on that, that's what we call tennis elbow. Obviously, it comes from our extensor, what I've mentioned in the video. Our extensor muscles coming into this tendon junction that hits right on the lateral side. On the medial side, that's where you hear a lot of golfer's elbow. There is a special test, or actually a couple special tests for these, but the, the physicians that I've always worked with always told me that they're not valid. It's like you just look at a good eval, you kind of look at it and stuff like that and you're going to get a lot of false positive that's why we do the valgus stress test to just make sure that ucl is still intact okay but you're going to treat it the exact same 
any any epicondylitis uh, is usually you know tendonitis or inflaming of that tendon junction. So it's not a ligament. We're going to treat it symptomatically. Once the symptoms are done, focus on strengthening. That way, it never happens again. All right. Or if it's overuse, cut down their overuse, whatever sports they're playing. If they're extending too much or, or flexing too much, okay? Okay, dislocation of the elbow. I've seen these a couple times, and, and I'll be completely honest with you all. I am not um, comfortable in relocating an elbow, all right? I will literally look at it. I will treat for signs of shock. I will splint. I will send. All the elbows that I've always had, even the orthopedic that's always been with me, I'm like on a sideline at a football game, they're not comfortable treating this. And it's a couple different things. It's one, we don't have x-ray vision, so it's hard to tell exactly where it dislocated at or, or if there was a fracture, uh, was the ulnar nerve involved, things like this, okay? So it's like, there are some physicians out there, they don't have a problem of uh, doing it because they do that probably in the ER trauma all the time. But for me, it's so bad, I have to just treat for signs of shock and I'm not going to mess around because I don't want to create more problems and I don't want to create a fracture. If you ever get a chance to work in, the, in a trauma unit and you feel comfortable doing it, obviously by all means do it. It's just one of those things I've only seen like two or three. I've never seen one actually by myself so I've never gotten to have a good hands-on with it. I'll be completely honest with you. So therefore when I do see these, I splint, I send, and I treat as is signs of shock, making sure that they do have capillary refill, um, neurosensation on their fingers and things like that, okay? I've got you some great pictures here of this poor man in the Olympics, in the Beijing Olympics. Uh, you can pass those up if you have a squeamish stomach. I'm sure there's tons of videos on YouTube as well of people dislocating their elbows. It is not a fun injury at all. Any dislocation is not fun, but obviously what I told you with the shoulder, I guess if I was going to dislocate anything, it'd either be my, my fingers or my shoulder. So, you know, hopefully there's not a fracture and we can pop those back in and get you back to playing. So... Let's see here. Fracture of the elbow. Uh, like I said, you always want to rule out a fracture first. Again, this can happen with the humerus. A straight transverse fracture is what we're always going for. But remember, treat every fracture as if it was serrated. Um, make sure you're not moving it. Make sure you're splinting property. All, all of your first aid techniques. And just remember, because we have two bones going down, only in radius, we need to look out for a, uh, a, um, a compound fracture. I have tons of stories, guys. I wish I could share them in class and stuff like that. It's usually what I do of all my fracture stories and how to treat them. But for time's sake, we'll just we'll pass that. If you guys ever want to visit me ever in the, uh, the gym, I can be more than happy to tell you these stories. Obviously, uh, injuries to the forearm, this happens. There's not a lot of uh, protection as far as muscles to our bone, just like with the knee. It's almost like a compartment syndrome. There, there can be a little bit of... Uh, I guess if you wanted to, compartment syndrome, just because we how we hold our hands and gravity works against us. But it's very rarely seen as far as the lower leg compared to the forearm, okay? Any contusion, though, uh, obviously you want to wear out a fracture first. And you want to make sure that basically they're kept comfortable and there's no uh, neurological damage. They can still have capillary refill going down to their hands and then treat accordingly. Got you some pictures of fractures. Pretty horrible ones. Usually when it's displaced like this, you will be looking at a splint. You will be looking at plates. Um, the biggest thing, especially with um, minors, is that there's not a growth plate issue going on down by the wrist or up by the elbow. And that's what usually doctors will look for. Other than that, you're looking at a good couple months recovery. When I'm on slide 47 right now when you're looking at this. Uh, boxer's fracture. Again, I kind of preach about that in my uh, my other video. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this class that either know somebody or have had a boxer's fracture. It, it's it's never a good uh, injury mechanism of injury. It's very rarely like somebody was like, oh yeah, I was actually in a boxing match and I punched somebody because I was playing that sport and I got a boxing fracture. Usually it was because somebody was mad and punched a wall or punched a locker or something like that. I always have patients and I, I males I'm going to shit on you for a second but it's it's literally always male athletes that always come in and they have their head down real low and I'm like what's up man and, and you can always you can always tell what's going on because they're holding their hand and I let them sit there for a little bit and then finally I'll ask them I'm like well what happened to your hand and like nothing it's like okay what happened you punch a wall yeah and it's it's a boxer's fracture as long as it's not displaced guys surgery is not required but just know that there is going to be a splint they are going to be out for a little period of time so most of the time three to four weeks 
um, depending on what sport they play. If they play like defense on football or something, you can wrap it in pads and get them back out there on the field. Obviously, if it's any other sport involving your hands, it's going to be a little bit different issue. But uh, just remember, boxers fracture, you kind of don't even have to put your hands on them. You can just see that these fourth and fifth is usually where it occurs. Obviously, it, occur, it can occur in second and third, too. But it's where these knuckles, one of these knuckles will just disappear. That's where you know it's positive. So you just compare bilaterally and you look like that, okay? And then lastly, dislocations, very, very common. I'm sure a lot of you all either know somebody or have had a finger dislocation or a metacarpal dislocation. Um, most of the times, uh, it, it's very easy to put back in. I still let them go out and play. I'll buddy tape them, like let's just say it's in football. But you do want to treat for signs of shock because it is scary. It's something that when you look at your hand, your finger's pointed like 90 degrees the other way or it's pointed out or something. Um, I usually get them back in, try to re, I have no problem relocating these, but I always do at least try as to get an x-ray on it, either after the game or as soon as possible. It's not a medical emergency unless they start going into shock, obviously, or unless they don't have capillary refill, but, uh, it, it's kind of like a 50, 50 if there's a fracture in that joint. And especially with minors, I don't want to, um, compromise a growth plate within that joint and all of a sudden one finger just be shorter than all the others as they grow and for some reason they can't do whatever job they were going to do in the future that's why I go ahead and get them I'll explain this to like parents or guardians after the game and things like that so again it's 50 50 it's either yes they had it or no they didn't right and then other than that guys that's it that's all I have so if you guys um, have any questions on this lecture um, it's pretty straightforward just let me know shoot me an email and then uh, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.